Oh, meeting recording is in progress. Good. Today, we are going to talk about how to create engaging presentation for your online classroom. I believe this is the last webinar for ETSOL students. Are you ready to start? Yes? Yes, I'm ready. Good. Morning, Crystal. Okay, here is our warm up. Look at here. I want you make as many as words with these letters C O F F E E. So, how many words can you make from the letters in coffee? C O F F E E. Mm, of very good. What else? You have just one minute. Off. <laughs> B. Bravo. Mm, bro, bro. Good. Guys, you have 30 seconds. Yes, but not yes, because there's no S here. <laughs> Echo. Oh, nice. Good job. Good job. Yes. Very good. Also office, I guess. Okay, thank you. Now, today we are going to talk. These are the objectives of today's webinar, synchronous and asynchronous learning environment, how to ease with technology. Oh, there's not high. You're right. Thank you. Um, what's flipped classroom? Collaborative projects, platforms and education sites for teaching online. Okay. What is the very first step for teaching online? You know, you should know your platform, what platform you are teaching or you're using for teaching, and also make it easy for your students. So you need to check if there is a chat box and you can use the chat box and how can you share the chat box with your students. Video of teacher. So they can see the teacher. Your video should be always on. They should always see you. Breakout rooms, when you can put your students in groups and pairs in breakout rooms. How can you share it with the students and how can you pair your students in breakouts? Pointer, if there's a pointer. Audio control icon, so louder or just stop your students to talk or share the mic with them, how it works. Interactive whiteboard, so you can share the whiteboard with the students and they can write on it as well. What about video of learners? Can you have the video of learners? Do your students access to video? I can list of students in the classroom so you can see the list and hands up icon so they can click on it and raise hands. Otherwise, if all of them talk together, it's very hard to understand what they're saying. And video control icon, so you can control it. You can turn it on or off for your students. These are the main features of platform. What is next? You need to set smart goals. Oh, my dear, you cannot hear me. What about the others? Can you hear me, guys? My dear said she cannot hear me. Oh, okay. So, my dear, I guess you need to check your internet connection. Okay. So, set the smart goals. Do you have any ideas? What are SMART goals or what are the characteristics of SMART goals?
the immeasurable. Bravo, bravo. Okay. So each letter in SWART goes to one characteristic. So basically, S go for specific. It's like um, terminal objectives. Mm -hmm. So it should be very clear. What is the specific aim of this session? And also measurable. So we can see how far you reach to your goal of the class or how well your students learn the target language of that session. And definitely, it should be achievable. Realistic, it's very important to be realistic. Sometimes we set some goals that's impossible to cover it in 60 minutes or in 90 minutes. Basically, in the time of the class, it's very difficult to achieve them. So it should be achievable and also definitely realistic. One thing more is timely. So. Uh, maybe the time of the class is only 60 minutes. So bef when you are planning before starting the class, you sh we should consider how much time you allocate for presentation, how much time students have for, for practice time, and how much time you want you, you need to assess your students and get production. So it should be timely, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely. So we need to have our lesson plan or design our lesson plan before going to the class. Another important factors in our classes is a student engagement. Because you cannot see them, you know, you are not in one environment. So what's your idea? How can you engage your students in your online classes? Any activities? What can you do? How to engage your students in online classes, my dear. Okay, you can put them in breakout rooms. That's very good, Mom. So we can break, put them in breakout rooms and give them topics to discuss. Excellent. What else? excellent video presentations. So you can ask them to turn on their videos and talk or discuss something or share their ideas. Very good. Polls really work. Mm -hmm. Excellent online games. Yeah, it really, really helps. And keep asking questions. Okay, keep asking them questions. Uh, it depends on the internet in some areas or in some countries. Like my did, she cannot follow us, so she cannot turn on the video. Okay, and also not microphone, but she can only type. So it depends the activity that you design. It depends on the internet connection as well. But the important thing is keep asking them different questions. Keep asking about their ideas. Keep asking uh, about the lesson. Mm -hmm. So they have to respond in the chat box. If it is hard for them to, I mean, if the internet doesn't support to turn on their mic or video because 
when you have online classes, it's out of borders. Maybe you have some students in another part of the world. That's the anticipation problems in your lesson plan. What if my students can't uh, use their video cam or can't unmute their mic? So you need to have a solution, plan B. What if happens? So what is another activity you have? Also, the good thing about online classes is you can teach in two environments, synchronous and asynchronous. Do you have any ideas what's the difference? What's the difference between synchronous and asynchronous learning environment? Mm hmm Okay. Thank you much. Thank you. Okay. Well, synchronous is like online lectures live. Bravo. That's it. Synchronous is the same class that we have right now. Mm -hmm. The instructor and students at the same time they are in the class. So can I ask you something right now and you can answer it and I can get the answer right now. So at the same time, the instructor and students are in the class, the synchronous learning environment. So it could happen Zoom in any platforms, in any platforms. But asynchronous, it's like your modules in your TESOL plan, Canvas. So anytime you can go and read it and do the activities. Maybe you wanna do it at the weekend or during the week, in the morning or at night, it depends on you. That's asynchronous. In your online classes, maybe you have two or three webinars but the rest of the uh, modules and the rest of the uh, material, you just upload them on a platform and ask your students to check, to study, to read, write their questions, and in the webinar, they come on and ask you. So that's asynchronous learning environment. For your online classes, you need both. You need both. Synchronous and asynchronous both. Is that clear? What's the difference? Is that clear for you guys? Okay, good. Sure, thank you. To create engaging classes, Games works a lot. There are many uh, online games that are going to introduce you some sites that you can give, get ideas. And uh, for your teenage students, teenagers and children, definitely you need move up activities. It's very hard for them to sit for a long time. So think about some activities that they need to move. Like for kids, you can ask them to bring something and show it to you. Like when you're working on colors, and so I want you to find something green in your room and bring and show it to me. So they go and bring something green like this. Turn on the video cam and show it. This is green. This is my froggy and it's green. Oh, good. Or bring your favorite doll or favorite toy and talk about it. So they go and they bring their favorite doll. So they have to move. Even for teenagers and say, so, okay, I want everybody for one minute. They go look outside through a window 
and then take notes. What can you see? And then come back and tell me. Or I want you in one minute, Google something, Google something and, uh, and find something, find some objects related to that and then show it to me. So they Google, for example, about different kinds of books. Mm -hmm. And they understand we have different genre. And they say, oh, I have a drama book. And they bring it and say, okay, this is my book. It's about, uh, it's a detective stories. So, you know, just make them busy and think about move of activity. What else is know your audience? No matter if either you teach in on site or online, we need to know our students. We need to know our students very well. It helps us to plan for activities much better and easier. If I know my students like games, like video games, they like, uh, for example, they're adults and they go to universities, they, they like sites that help them to do researches, or if they are housewives, they like cooking and home designing and these things. So when I'm thinking about the activities, I, I'm going to talk or I, we're going to have some activity based on the topic that they like. When I want to give them text to read, so I, I go for topics which appeal to them. They like it. So it's good to know your students, know about their interests, hobbies, and activities they're involving. Extend the learning video window, I'm sorry, extend the learning window. We always consider our students have different styles of learning, modes of modes of learning. So some of them are visual, some of them are auditory, some others are what? Do you remember modes of learning or styles of learning? What are they? Visual, auditory, mm -hmm. what else? Kinesthetic. Excellent. Kinesthetic and? Interpersonal, I think. Uh, okay. <laughs> Read and write. Read and write. You're okay. right. Read and write. Some students like to read something. This is the way that they learn it or take notes. So we said it, read and write. Also, interpersonal or intrapersonal, they like to talk about it or they like to have thinking time to think about it by themselves. Games goes for kinesthetic learners. So just prepare different activities for your class. You have one topic, but you practice through different kinds of activities, variety activities for different learners. So, we need to think about how you will facilitate the process each step of the way, you, how well you introduce the activity. So, how do you give them the instructions? Do you need to provide anything with directions? Do you need visual aids? Do you need video, for example, a short video clip or posters or something? How much time will you give students to do that activity? Because it's online and they can unmute them, so they can mute themselves and turn off their video cam. So there is no control over it. So it's very important the time that you give to students is good enough, not too short, not too long. And how will you debrief? how you evaluate, how you get the feedback. These are all important things that you need to consider in your lesson plan. Pictures 
helps you a lot. Pictures help you a lot in teaching online. Just look at this picture. What do you work on it with your students? What do you ask about this with your students? What does it show? Or when you look at this picture, what's your understanding of this picture? Wonder what they might be celebrating. Uh huh. Celebration. Very good. Very good. Celebration. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about Easter. You can talk about, for example, birthdays. Yes, being happy, being with a family, many things, many things. So pictures, especially big image, have big images have big impact. And they can remember better, you know, you help them to remember better. What else? You need a rubric for your students. It's good to keep a rubric of your students' improvement. Score them, okay? It's like a scoring guide, a guide to evaluate your students better. We cannot evaluate our students just through midterm and final or one or two quizzes. We do need summative assessment, which uh, I mean like midterm and final, but also you, you need formative assessments during the term, how well they understanding just by doing activities, by having group projects. So also in this way, we need to assess our students. In your rubrics, you need to be very clear. So what's your rating skills, indicators, performance criteria, and you have to explain it for your students. Even you can send it to them. So from the first session up to now, which is 20 sessions, you have improved. Look here in your writing, you have better handwriting. You can use punctuations and you get A in paragraph writing, in your listening, in your reading and speaking. In this way, the students also understand how well they learn the language and how much to improve. Uh, sometimes students say, I haven't learned anything in this term, but if you show them the rubric, then say, oh, I learn a lot. Definitely you need PowerPoint, PowerPoint for teaching. You don't have, I mean, you do have a board, but when you want to share the images, audios, videos, and different things that uh, you want to use for your teaching, you need the PowerPoint. Have you ever make any PowerPoints for any presentations? Do you have experience of using PowerPoints? Oh, good. Oh, good. So, oh, give me a minute. Just wanna. Okay. Look here. Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes. Good. You have some options here. File. So in your file, you can click on new and you have a new page with different design. And open, these are the old ones, save, save as, and these things. Then here, I don't want to see. Here, paste, cut and paste. And the layout, it shows how do you like it? Do you like it like this? Or, so let me open another one because I don't want to use the one that I'm talking to. So here, so you say create, you choose a color and then say you create. 
So here you have it. Still, you can see it. Do you have it? Do you have the new PowerPoint that I, oh, it's in blue. I want to know if I need to share it again or you can see it. Oh, okay, good. So here it said, then you use the title side. For example, webinar. And then you put your name here. Okay, you put your name here or date or whatever you like. For next, for next, depends on what you want to type, you choose the platform. So you like it like this or with two columns or three columns, small and big one. How do you like this? Then you can put the title here. And and here you type. This way in the middle, what's the size? What about if you want to put bullets? So is it right to left or left to right? And what about the space between the lines? What about the colors, background, bold, italic, underline? And text and everything. If you want to insert anything, you can put it here. So you click on it and then you can insert. Uh, Maida, I guess you have to. Oh, you cannot hear me. I guess you need to check your internet connection or watch the video later. Good. So here. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe that works too. And then you can change, you can hear, you can change the color. So you click and say, I want this blue or I want this green. Insert. So we can insert, you can insert table. You say, I want a table like this, this, or I want to, and then they say they give you options for the colors or columns and shading. What else is you can see, I want to insert text box. So here is a text box and you can type on it. Okay, so here's for insert. Then you have design, how you want to design, change the design or the color, see which one do you like more, or you can browse for more options. And even you can give the different, even you can have different format like solid or patterns. So we can change the patterns. Transition, how do you want it shows? For example, you say, I want it like this. It comes here or it wipe or split or reveal or random bars. So how do you like this? I usually use this, it's, it's fun. Well, you have options here. And then animation. So here you put, for example, you said you write here steps. So I said, you said, I want to have this first then I want to show the table. So how it shows what you have. Do you like like this? Or zoom? Or grow? How do you like it comes? Or buns? So that goes to animation and slideshow. 
you can put it on a current slide or from beginning and every two minutes it just change. I, I usually click on it because sometimes I, I need to talk more on one slide, but maybe in one presentation or if it's asynchronous, you put it on this options. After two minutes, the slides will pass. And review, so you have lookup, spelling, and checking something, and a view, so how do you like it shows? It's, this is normal. Or maybe you like it like this, or slight sorter, or reading view, so how do you like that? Good? Do you get it? How to work with your PowerPoint? Is that clear now? Oh, thank you, Crystal. So it said, oh, my dad, you cannot hear us, but you can do, yeah, that's good. That's a good option. Yes, yeah, that's good too. Thank you, Crystal. So guys, do you get how to use your PowerPoint or how to make PowerPoint? Do you get it? Any questions? Okay, good. Thank you. What about flipped classroom? Do you have any ideas what's flipped? Flipped classroom. When you send the material to the student before the class, exactly. Or maybe homework after the class, that's flipping. Um, as you know, your students, you check and you said next uh, lesson is about Japan. And as you know, your students said, you know your students and you know they have no ideas about Japan or different tourist centers in Japan, cuisine and anything about it. But the text is about all about Japan. So what you do, you can find, you can find a short clip about Japan and flip it to students before coming to the class. Then you ask them, I want you to watch this short video about Japan. We are going to discuss different uh, issues about this country next time in the class. So when your students enter the class, they have ideas about the topic. Otherwise, there would be only listeners. You have to talk all the time because they have no ideas. Or maybe it's about environmental problems. So you could send them a text and say, I want you to read about these problems that we have in the world. Think about the solutions or share your ideas or if you have any, any experience based on these problems come to the class and next time we have a discussion about these topics. So you prepare your students for the next session. You can either email it or upload it in any site and share the link with your students and your students can go and read it or download it. Also, after the class, you teach in the class, you have practice time and you get the feedback. Then you believe that your students need to work more at home. So you said, I'm going to email you. Let's talk about grammar. I'm going to email you that you made mistakes while you were talking in the class. 
So I'm going to email you and think about your mistakes. Next time, when you come to the class, tell me the correct form or email me the correct form. So you take notes of all errors and mistakes of your students, you email it to them. At home, they need to think, they check their book, they check their notes, they study for it, find the correction, correct it, and find the correct answer, and email it, either email it back or discuss it for the next session. So again, it's flipping, either before or after. It just helps your students to learn the subject much, much better. And also on your side as a teacher, you know, okay, they practice enough, they prepare enough for the lesson. That's flipping. Make it more fun for your students. Uh, or have some activities which is which are not very mechanical or robotic. Uh, make them think back to where those four C's that we discussed in the very first webinar, in the very first webinar about communication, characteristics of 21st century, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. Help them to be more creative. Help them to think better. So this like uh, thinking about the world. If you want, even for the lower level, this is an example for lower level. You want to practice there is and there are. Mm -hmm. You can ask your students, okay, tell me what are there in your bedroom? So they said there is a clock on the table, there is a bed under the window, there are chairs in the corner. Or you said, okay, look at this map. This is a world map. Find your house. It's so, oh, there is my house. It's in Middle East, for example, or it's in Canada, or here it is. There are many streets around it, like Google Map. So just make it a bit fun and help them to think. Make it make it challenge for them. Okay? Work on their critical thinking ability. It's like a challenge they have to find, they have to search. It helps them to learn better also. If you want them to talk about holiday, ask them to download City Guide apps. Mm -hmm. And said, I want you to plan a day trip in Rome. What attractions to see, what tour to go on, where to stay and where to eat out. So download City Guide apps and find Rome and answer to these questions. So they learn about Rome. Okay, and so oh, I want to learn in Pizza Docini, for example. It's here. This is the address. We're going to stay in this hotel and it's fun. And the other students search for it. Or find your um, think about your favorite city and uh, for next session you have one minute to introduce your favorite city and talk about attractions and why it is your favorite and what's interesting about that city and they say okay my favorite city is Buenos Aires and then they start to talk about it or my favorite city is Dubai there are big malls, there are wonderful places, and there are excellent restaurants, mm -hmm. and they show it on the city. They can share the link, and the other students can click on it on their cell phone and, and see the map. So this is fun. This is fun. So when, I was, when I'm talking about make it fun for your students, I mean just using technology. Kahoot is another one. Have you ever used Kahoot? Okay, let me share my browser. Guys, have you ever used Kahoot?
Give me a minute to share my browser with you guys. Okay, good. So what is my chat box? Yes, oh good, this is fun. This is really fun. So here is the link copy. Let me put it here for you. So much. Well, how did you use it? For what class and what activity? For Kahoot. We use Kahoot for um, uh, pick. Um, the task was to pick synonyms for words. So um, we put up the options, and the children had to pick the options, and that was the game that they played on Kahoot. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. So, first of all, thank you very much, much for sharing. Uh, so, first of all, this is sign up for free. It's free. Mm -hmm. And make learning awesome. You can have games, play, and news, and many things. You can even study for a college at school, at work, or at home. So, you just create it or find it, find some games, and you can play it. There's a game pin. So when you find a game or when you make the game for them, it gives you a pin. You share the pin with your students. They click on Kahoot, enter the pin, and they enter the game. The other one is Bamboozle. It's grammar games. OK, so here you click on games. You have the games, then you search for it. Let's say, for example, past tense. Search for past tense and irregular past tense verb. Click on it. Mm -hmm. And so either you have to study so you can practice like this with your students, or it's a um, it's a production part. So you can click on play, play for free. And say so there are two groups, 16 questions. Then you click on classic. You access to your students, put them in two groups and access to them. Mm -hmm. Share your screen and access to them. Or even if it's impossible for them, you say, okay, which number do you like? Or which number do you choose? They said number six. You click on a six, six and it said, okay, I fill in the blanks. Patrick said, they said, was, it's so low, let's see. Field or felt, which one? And they said, felt, it's so, okay. Oh, that's right. Okay, so they get points and then you ask the next group. So this is fun grammar games. What next is game kit. You sign up for it, make a game, and then share the link. This is a prize. They, they get the prize in dollars. Okay. And they it's like multiple choice or different games, but mostly multiple choice. They click on the answer. Game kit. By the way, they are all free. You can make it, and then you hear like this. It said, "Join game." Your students click on join game. Then said, so "Now write the code, or enter the code." When you make it for when you make a game for your students, it gives you a code. And then you share the code with your students. So they enter the code and then they can play. What else is Vengage? Vengage, this is sign up for free too. They can do projects. They can do different projects. It's really work for a higher level, like intermediate above. Copy, engage. 
can make projects and share with you, or then you can share it with the whole class. Scratch is like stories, games, animations for teenagers and for kids mostly, but you can find something for adults as well. So this is a good site too. Here even it has ideas. So say I want to make a game, for example, or I'm looking for stories for conditionals. So it gives you ideas or how to create it. This is a scratch. If you need uh, whiteboards, online whiteboards, Zightboard is a good one and it's free. You don't need to pay. You just need to share the link. Okay, you need to share a link and here, look, you can even draw on it or write on it. Then you can see, look, you can upload something on it. You can give access to your students. So your students also can write and um, study on it. When you create it in your name, then you share the link with your students. Uh, also Miro, Miro is also free. Miro is also free, sign up free. And then you can share the, here, look. You can share the link with your students. Your webcam, it could be in synchronous and asynchronous. Sometimes you upload something and later, anytime, they some students their time, they can go and check it out. Or they can even put notes for you or upload their assignment here and everybody, the whole class can see all the files. Will Dice. Okay, will dice. It's like uh, when you have an activity in the class, just make it fun for your students. You say, okay, you give them access and they click on it. See? This one is for topic to discuss phone and old friend. So you have two minutes to talk about phone and old friends. But you can even here look, look, you can hear here you write the questions. And then you change the topics here and make your own will. Again, you ask for students to click and they say, okay, what's your name? And so my name is Alham. Phone and your family. Okay, so you can change it here. You can change the questions and apply. Lino is really useful. So here in Lino, it's free too. So I usually have it with my webinars. So for example, I ask them, I share the link, I share the link with my students and they write their ideas for me or they ask the questions. And you see all these students uh, can see what the other students ask, or you say, you share the link and say, okay, here's my question. Share your reflection. What I have, what have I learned? So they share their reflection. Add puzzles, this is for adults and also for teenagers, I guess. Schools also, you can use it. This one, Look, you can upload visual poster, I mean, visual things or, and uh, games like this one, games, data, graphs, and flip it to your students and ask them to 
Google and study for this to talk about it or to write about it for next session. And this is this is a very good one for kids. ESL games. So you have games, topic based on the topics, for example, num numbers, Halloween, preposition, shapes, music. So you click on it and you see different exercises, worksheets and everything. You have also quizzes for words, for readings, videos, worksheets, depend on the grades and the level of your students. You can download, you can share with your students and even play. So useful sites. Let's get back to my PowerPoint. There you go. You can use some of them or some ideas for uh, homework as well. either in the class or out of the class, just sharing links. And But it's very important that uh, the instruction must be very clear for your students. So these are the things. Uh, British Council, British Council Learning English Kids or Learning, here it said Learn English Kids, Learn English Teens, Learn English Adults. So, Again, you have different activities, videos, worksheets, stories, games, and everything. And they're all free. They're all free. TED Talk. Uh, I do recommend TED Talk for adults, intermediate above. They get, it really helps them to be more fluent and accurate. They get familiar with different accents and expressions, words, structures. They can shadow it. Mm -hmm. They listen and they repeat by themselves, or they can summarize it, or they can write about their ideas or talk about them. You can share one TED video or one TED audio with your students and say, this is a topic for our next time discussion. Oh, this, these are visual whiteboards, so Zeitboard and Myra, I show it to you. Also, groupboard.com and twiddle.com. They are all free. They are all free. You just need to share it, uh, share the link with your students. It works even on different uh, cell phone program, Android or iOS. Oh, Myra with Pi. Oh, here is the Myra page. See, you have different options and colors, and you can share it, share the link, and access, give access to your students. Also, Google Classroom. So, you know, Google Classroom is a platform, and it's free on Google. Another very common platform especially North America, Zoom. WebEx, we use it in TISO Canada. Skype is free for all around the world, it's free. Not the business one, the regular one is free. Uh, but the thing is, in Skype, you have, it doesn't have a whiteboard or breakout room. It's good for private classes and you can share your document with your students or audios. Big blue button also, but it's very much like uh, WebEx. And this well design, uh -huh. welldesign.com. Let me show it to you. Lino, we talk about it. Don't forget to give them some creative homework. You can ask them to video or record something and send it to you. Then uh, you can share it with the group. Mm -hmm. 
just make it more fun, like talking about your favorite room in the house. They video it and they talk on the phone. They can do it with, with their cell phone. Screencastify, uh, it's very easy to use and it uh, helps students or the teacher how to edit their video or how to make uh, some changes or add something, cut something, screen classify. Also, add puzzle, but I, I, I just shared the link with you guys. Add puzzle. So you can, they can, you can make uh, video lessons for your students. And also your students can edit their videos. ESL, this ESL kids stuff, uh, you can find different resources for English teachers that teach kids. They're all printable. Even you can find lesson plans here, flashcards, worksheets, songs, classroom, uh games and crafts and everything if you want to use these in your lesson plans in your classes don't forget to write the reference okay so to download it from esl kids stuff and this one teach this this is for teenagers and adults fun and engaging esl activities games and worksheets for english teachers for grammar, for speaking, reading, writing, games. It's so fun and very, very helpful, especially the worksheets. Even for your assignments, you can use these sites, but just mention the reference. And that, that's the ESL games that we talk about it. For quizzes, Quizlet, Quizlets uh, also is good, but you need to make short quizzes for your classes just to get the feedback. You can upload your quizzes in different format, or you can give them a link and give them access to do the quiz, but in specific time like your TESOL course. So say, for, exa for example, for two days, you can do this quiz, but each time you click on it, it's for one hour only. So we can do that too. So far, do you have any questions about sites or do you wanna share anything that you use for your classes? Any sites that you use? Okay, good. So, before the lesson, Google Classroom a lot. Okay, great. Yes, it's very easy to use. So, remember, before the lesson, Get familiar with the material, with the activity and your platform and all you think that you need to use while you're teaching. Also, prepare for the activity. Give clear instructions to your students. And don't forget to make groupings, pair working, and give them time to think. And not only that, they have time to discuss about it with their classroom. So you need to use breakouts. Use it for not private. Private, you can use a Skype. But for uh, the other classes, which you have two or three or more students, you need this platform with breakouts. Run the activity while you're putting in pairs or groups. Monitor them. You need to go to their breakouts and listen to the monitors, just check they are on the right track. Or uh, 
you need to give them prompts or they need help or any questions. After practice, pre for a wide pose. So you need to get feedback. Sometimes every two or three sessions, maybe you have a short quiz to assess them in your, with quizzes, or maybe they have to do a project at home. Anyhow, each session recap the lesson. Just check the main objectives with your students and just be sure they've learned give them the home assignment or give them project or anything they have to do and ask for the instruction. And when you give them the instruction, check the instruction and ask if they have any questions or everything is clear for them. Maybe you need to flip something to them or you share the link or for forum, ask their questions. So post activity to follow up on work. Uh, one important thing is in your online classes, uh, teacher talking time should be less than student talking time. So let them time, let them give them time to talk, let them talk. Uh, the important thing is either if they can't uh, turn on their webcam, but they have to speak. But otherwise, how can you check their speaking skill? So they need to access to microphone. And starting time, start energetically. So start, how do you start your lesson? Introduction is very important. I always said uh, that start your class with a good warm up. Let them think, let them have time, fun, maybe in your uh, children classes, you start with song, so they start singing together. Mm -hmm. So just think about kind of activity, give boost the energy in the class. And so start energetically, move up activities during the lesson, especially for our children and teenagers, they need to move a little bit and finish on a high note. So it's good especially for our teenagers and above, I mean, for our teenagers and adults, you tell, oh, so this session, you have learned this and this and that. So they know, oh, that's, that was a fruitful session. It gives them self-confidence when they see their improvement, when they understand their improvements. That rubrics also helps a lot. Even for children, you can show it or share it with their parents. So they, they understand all oh, our children learning something. Their interest is very important. So knowing your students, we always said, know your students, which we mean know about their interests and hobbies. So what are their favorites? It helps you to make engaging activities when, when it's about their interests and about their uh, favorite topics like food, animal, jobs, sport, weather, art, what they like. Mm -hmm. Or what they do in their free time, like watching movies, clothes, dessert. So they have ideas to talk. If you, we start talking about a topic which they are not interested, first of all, they don't have any ideas. They don't want to talk. They don't want to write about it. But when they have ideas, they want to learn the new words. They want to learn new structure. because They want to express themselves. So in this way, you motivate them to learn. We know praising and encouraging motivates the students. Even when they make mistakes, find something positive first. So it's like a sandwich. Give positive feedback. Then when you want to criticize, you we need to provide constructive criticism. So say, okay, in your writing, you need to practice more on punctuation. 
So let's review. When do we use comma? When do we use period? When do we use quotations or, or exclamation marks? How do we use it? When do we, okay, here, are the, here is the page that you need to review. Or I flip to you or I email you some material to go through it or listen to it or watch it. So help them. You just said, okay, you still have some problem with punctuation work on it, but how? So as a teacher, we need to prepare the material and activity and exercises to help them to practice and study more. And again, positive feedback. I'm sure next time you won't have these problems. So always be positive. So in your online classes, we are distant, but that doesn't mean we can't be close. How? Huh? Through all these sites, emails, Lino, Edmodo, different sites that your students can put notes, ask questions, and from this session to the other session, you can be in contact, you answer. It's not only once a week or twice a week that I can ask my teacher questions. No, all the time they can ask their questions and based on your time, you can answer to this. But they are in contact with their teachers and even with the other students. Collaboration, not only between the students, but also between teachers. So it's good that, you know, other online teachers or even in TISO, you get connected and then you share your ideas about your classes or even material that you find for your classes or you create for your classes. And you can share it with the other friends on your name. If they want to teach present sense and you make a game, they can share it on your, okay, my they make this game and, the, and then you play it in the class. So you have to really run the game in the class. That is collaboration. Just doing all by yourself is taking a long, long time. But you can have a bigger material bank when you all work together. Good. So any questions, guys? Do you have any questions? I'm very sorry that Maida has a problem in connection. Hopefully next time it will get better. And you know all about your assignment, yes? Just be on time, okay? Um, by the way, there is another thing I want to mention that your Monday classes with Anna be one hour later. So instead of, for example, Eastern time in Toronto, it's one right now, going to be two. So Mondays one hour later, like last week. Yes, just Mondays with Anna one hour later, but Saturdays the same time. Sure. Sure. Thank you very much. Take care and have fun. Bye-bye. Sure. Bye. Thank you.